Yo, it's shaking AC. <laughs> well, it's one of those times where my earrings seem to be shaking. That's happened before. Okay. I did this. Move my head like that. That's Yo. what's shaking. Good. <laughs> That's what, I was going to make some smart joke about earrings and, uh, and then I just sort of fizzled away there. <laughs> yeah. Just have to uh, jump right in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just want to jump right in. Listen. As you know, I love to read the news a lot and you probably, you tell me very frequently, just stop because it's yeah. getting you like frustrated. It's you yeah. know, your emotions are aroused, you know, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Like this, uh, you don't have to read it. You could just let it come to you. I, differently. I read like all news. Like I read industry news, geopolitical news, domestic news, crypto news, like the works. Right. Um, and naturally, uh, no pun intended, there has been a lot of natural disasters these days. Uh, mm -hmm. And it really sort of brings me back to a time where I guess I had to deal with a natural disaster. Natural, I put that in air quotes for anyone listening. And that was this damned pam pandemic. Um, man, was that a colossal pain in the butt. And <laughs> I have a huge amount of opinions on that, but I'm not going to get into it. Um, but one of the things that, that frustrated me was the endless, endless conversations about how you supported your franchisees. Like we're talking like it's two years past lockdown and panelists are still talking about this. I'm like, can we just get back to real life now? And now with all these natural disasters happening, there's a lot of franchisees who maybe potentially need some sort of support. Yeah. And dare I say it, something should have been learned from all of these endless conversations about post-pandemic support, right? Uh, <laughs> Maybe we should keep talking about them. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm wondering, have you at all chatted with your network of franchisors and, and your roundtables and things like that about what is what they're actually doing here? Because my jaw will hit the floor if they do not know what to do. <laughs> Well, now I'm going to be careful what I say. Okay. <laughs> you did all the ranting already for this whole rant. Oh, baby, I got more. No, I know. No, no, we'll just pause. Okay. We'll just like park that for now. We can do that offline. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, well, it's been a conversation at our roundtables. And it's funny that you say that because one of the things I, I will admit I, that came up um, was when we first, the first conversation about it, I was like, you know, um, when these things happen, we're not, and we're not expecting them. Uh, we might not know how to handle them because, you know, it's not something you're per planning for and whatever. Right. And as the conversation went on, it was kind of like, you know, it's, well, for example, the pandemic, you know, we definitely, that was definitely a big thing, right? Like that, that was something we had never gone through. But then as we're kind of going through this, I was like, you know what though, hurricanes we've gone through, like no, anybody that has franchisees in a hurricane zone, should have a plan in place for how to help those franchisees when it happens. Cause guess what? It's happened before and it's going to happen again. And whether, yeah, whether it's that or whether it's cyber attacks or some businesses, power outages really bring them to the ground. I mean, most businesses in some way, they, the power outage is a problem, but it can be worse for some than others. You know, whether it's that burglary, like theft, you know, there's so many things that can impact a business and, I guess I would like, so this was what came up is like, to what degree does the franchisor, is the franchisor responsible for helping the franchisees in these situations? So I think ultimately the theme was that, you know, you're as a franchisor, the idea is that you are going to help the franchisee be successful, but they're also business owners and, you know, they also need to step up and take some, own, not ownership, but take some steps, some action steps in their communities when these things happen. And I could go, now I could go on and on and on, but I'll just pause there and just get your thoughts on, you know, franchisee versus franchisor, you know, whose responsibility and um, should they have a plan in place or should they be focused on other things and just deal with it in the moment? Yeah. I mean, I think it makes sense to have a plan in place. I wouldn't say it needs to be completely elaborate because we're already up to our eyeballs and different policies and procedures and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Right? But something like immediately or even before it happens, if you're aware, 
call your insurance agent right away. Like my insurance guy, he's so awesome. He's like, let me know immediately. I will get you out or through anything, right? Yeah. You need to take care of like all the insurance coverage there, right? And then, you know, different disasters require different things. Like if your business is completely leveled to the ground, maybe there's, you know, like you can't open because your whole city has been labeled leveled to the ground. But if it's something Mm -hmm. like a power outage or a flood, like maybe there's like a two week period where they're shut down and they just have to, you know, get all the water out or whatever it might be right so there's different Mm -hmm. different ways to go about it um but i totally hear you from the standpoint of they're also business owners and i think sometimes and i've heard this spoken about on your roundtables before is that there is a level of over support you Mm -hmm. know if you over support your franchisees uh then they start to become babies and they just you know they almost kind of kick back and they assume everything can be done for them now in a scenario like this I think over support is good because it is an empathetic way of doing it. However, I preface that by saying if your entire relationship of over has been of over support, now it's time to man up and get to work, you know? Um, but if you've, if you've maintained a, like a, a reasonable level of support, then right now is when you can come in and, and help them out, you know? Yeah, I think we need to, I don't want to go on, all- Before you say that, what, what if the tables were flipped? What if the franchisor was leveled? Would the franchise oh, this came up at the roundtable and help us? You know, that's funny that you say that because that actually came up at the roundtable and we were having a good laugh about it because we're like, probably not. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say I don't want to go down the over support path too much because we've ranted about that before. Yeah. But I, I want to clarify when over support means do in my my definition of over support means doing doing things for the franchisees that they could do versus good support is like here's what i w- i would say when let's use the hurricane because that's sort of recent to right now um the two recent hurricanes uh and so okay franchisee can't um uh run their business right now but what can they do can they get out into the community and help their community in some way can they turn it around and um you know if they're uh like some kind of a a cleaning business can they go offer their services to a different type of business can they maybe do or uh, one of them was a nail as a nail salon what about if you were like offer like the fr- t- help the franchise you come up with ideas like maybe go offer nail like manicures to the first responders that are have dealt with it as a charity initiative and you know raise money like Sorry, I'm getting all like wound up about this because I think there's opportunity. You help the franchisee with the opportunity, but you don't go do it for them, yeah. right? And it's like you support them. You maybe you help them. Here, you know, here's some examples of uh, places that you might be able to get some hurricane relief from. You go get it though. I'm not going to go do the phone call for you. To me, over support is oh my gosh, I'm going to do the phone call for you now. If they really need it because they're really suffering and struggling in that location and you can do it sure but i i think you got to be careful with over support creates a monster and i think it's you ha- they have to be business owners and have their steps and that's why i said earlier like like what are they or i don't know if i said this but like <laughs> what are the what is the franchisee doing if you're going to say waive the marketing fee for the month because they're they just can't operate their business and whatever what are they doing that month they, if they're going to go, as we said during the pandemic, lay on a couch and uh, eat Doritos and watch Netflix, then I'm not going to waive your marketing fee. But if you're going to take some ownership and get out there yeah. to do some things to grow your business and leverage this opportunity or at least give back to your community, show up. This is the time when people are going to notice you. This is where you, you can shine in your community. So if you do your part, we'll do our part. That's a partnership. And that's what I believe the support should be in these times and always. Yeah. It reminds me of like when you sign a new franchisee, they're always bright eyed and bushy tailed, right? Like, like my prospects are always looking for real estate, even before they've been trained on real estate. They're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's get right to it. I'm like, guys, hold on. Let's understand the demographic and all that sort of stuff first. Right. But then at some point throughout uh, the relationship a franchisee's uh, passion can become complacent and things like that. So now when you have this major big event, you need that initial passion there to get up, dust yourself off and do it again. Right. So this, it's it's almost like now it's like a cultural thing that you got to keep that maintained throughout the entire relationship or even a vetting question so that when, you know, something does go wrong, they've still got that initiative and said, whatever, you know, if I've hit rock bottom, the only way is up. Yeah. Got to niche and instill that for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this up. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Three, two, one.
Go be awesome. <laughs>